Robert Lugo, 22 years, U.S. Army. I was deployed to Mosul, Iraq, Baghdad, Iraq, Kirk, Iraq. The north through the south, through the east and west, I was all over. We had 19 locations on my second deployment. We had 15 locations on my first deployment. And my last deployment, we think we had between 12 and 15. My brother-in-law, which is my brother-in-law now, wasn't my brother-in-law back then. Um, he said, "Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna go join." And I was like, "I'll do it." And so it's funny because actually he had a, a moped, and I actually jumped on the back of his moped, and like we just went to the recruiter station. And uh, I remember getting there, and um, I had my birth certificate, and my uh, my uh, social security card, and my anything, my ID at that time, and I was just sitting there like, "Hey, there you go. I want to join." I remember that they were walking back and forth. I was trying to figure out who I was. They thought I had an appointment or something, and I'm like, no. Until finally the recruiter came up to me. He's like, what can we get for you? I mean, what can we do for you? And I was like, I want to join. He's like, right, come to my desk. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> so, and actually, her brother in law left me, and he didn't join. He joined like a few years later, I think it was. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I first was a food service specialist. I decided to do that because my uh, father was a food service. Um, my wife, which was my girlfriend at the time, her grandfather was also food service. So they, to me, that was just a job that I could do when I get out. That was uh, <clears throat> that just had some longevity in it. I knew people always needed to eat, so I figured that'd be a great thing to do. Plus, it was indoors, so. I've had uh, my father, my grandfather, military station in Fort Linwood, Missouri, Fort Carson, Colorado, Fort Lewis, Washington, Fort Drum, New York, El Paso, Texas. School Food Barracks, Hawaii, twice. Can't forget Hawaii. So in about 2003, uh, 2003, 2004, when I came back from Korea, I had a first arm, first arm fry. He first sent me to uh, the Combatives Academy. When I came back from that, they were looking for somebody to help um, protect the Colonel and Sergeant Major for protective security detail. I was selected to do that, and then that was the next 10, 12 years of my career. So, my title was a uh, non-commissioned officer, protective security detail, NCYC in charge. Uh, I was also the NCYC of the command command group, which is the command group is the uh, the soldiers that help um, with the uh, colonel and sergeant major. They can be the secretary, the drivers, all the soldiers in between. Because I was not commissioned officer, I was in charge of them, watching them, make sure they got they were ready for everything and they knew their schedules and stuff like that. So. Um, six um, and we were in Mosul on a Ford base Mosul and we were we had just got there we were probably within about two weeks of getting there my colonel let me know that she wanted to fly around to go see everybody that she needed to fly around and go see um, she got a group together of senior senior uh, leaders together we myself and an, another individual went to go we were the ones protected to watch them uh, we were at the tarmac at about nine, ten o'clock at night. I had some other senior leaders that were getting ready to sit down and just uh, take a, a nap until um, take a nap until that uh, the plane came, the, the, bird, the bird got there and uh, my colonel was getting ready to, to she, was, she was struggling to, to, to sleep. It was the first time that we had really had any kind of interaction so she was struggling to, uh, to, to take a nap or to 
to rest a little bit. And uh, I remember she had her hat over her head. Um, she kind of like put her hat back up and looked at me. And I was sitting there on my bag and I looked back at her and um, I said, you're good, ma'am. And she put her hat back on and went to sleep and that was it. So I remember after that point it was, it was understanding that, that my job was to take care of them, make sure she got back where she needed to get back to. Our first class Lugo, greetings from the Army War College where Tony and I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you and wish you all the best in your future career. It is an honor and privilege to serve with you and to count you and your lovely wife Esperanza among our friends. You are an inspiring leader with a positive attitude that is contagious. It only takes a few minutes to know that you are direct, engaged, fun-loving, and all about soldiers. But I think the true measure of your career is the most positive aspects impact that you have had on so many of us. I want to thank you personally for always taking care of business, ensuring to the safety of the command team. Whether it be the admissions to different FOBs, our many humanitarian missions, or the, the many, many more adventures, the number of missions and miles are just too many to recount. But your leadership and taking care of those soldiers, now that's priceless. Thank you for always being that non-commissioned officer, husband, and father that everybody can count on. And know that you have made our army and our nation better. The job that I was entrusted was to protect them and to make sure that my guys that we were rolling with, those guys were protected also. So my mindset was at all costs to make sure those guys get back as well as, as well as her and do whatever I have to do to take care of them. I had 12 guys I had to get back as well as her and whoever else that rode with us. Um, I think when my commander's leg got blown off, I think it was, uh, I think what got us, what got us through that moment was, uh, there was this, there's probably about eight trucks together. And what got us through that moment is everybody just focusing on getting, getting Captain Tong um, to where you need to be to. And I think after that, it was, after the, after the overmath was over, it was, everybody was focusing on how everybody was doing knowing that we came so close to, to something that happened to, us, to some of us. And we kind of all pulled together and I think it was a, a series of just asking questions and how everybody doing and everybody was fine. And you have those moments in combat where you're just, um, you're not really wanting to say anything's okay or anything's wrong with you, but at the same time um, you need to say if something's, okay, if something's wrong with you. And um, my guys got through it um, and I hope they were better off. Uh, when we left there, but I knew our lives changed at that moment in time, too. My motivation with the fire was I really just wanted to... I was, I was done with what I was doing. Um, I always knew it was a job. I, I knew I couldn't do it forever. I knew that I couldn't, I couldn't hold that. I couldn't hold that forever. It, it was something that wasn't mine to hold forever. It was something that I, I, I kept what I... I held the torch while I was there, but it was a certain time I had to pass the torch off to other people to keep rolling, and that's how things keep going. And for me, I stood there and, and believed that it was my time to move on to something else. And um, my kids were older, um, you know, things were moving fast, I needed to do something else, and I really just wanted to, to take a break, and, and, and I wanted to capture something new. I wanted to find something new. What, what, what was the next thing for me? Um, and I think that was part of it, too. Like, I couldn't... I could capture more in the military, but I wasn't willing to wasn't willing to put in those. I, put, I really wasn't willing to put in the work to do it. I wanted something new. I wanted something else. So that's why. I think to the veterans that are transitioning, that think that there's nothing out there for them out here in the civilian life. That like I'm not going to get a job. I'm not going to do this. Um, no, I say no. I said there there is something out here for you. You you have a place. You have a purpose. You you can find out what you have to find out. But you got to put the work in. Um, to the veterans that are already out here, they just got to keep moving forward. They just got to get up every day. And they got to keep attacking every single day like they were still in the military. Because it, it's the day that you don't attack is the day that that goal, that dream is, is just pushed farther and farther from you. And so I think they just got to, both of them just got to continue to keep going. But there is something out here for us. We, we all have a place. And, and that place, wherever you find it at, is, is the, per the perfect place for you. You just got to find it. It's never going to be given to you. So.